this is my third time starting because I kept saying her name wrong. This is episode Unlucky 13, and today's topic is the patron saint of witchcraft, Saint Columba, not Columbia, Columba of Riti. There. Um, I specifically tried to find something unlucky, and this is the closest I could come. There's not, there's not like a patron saint of broken mirrors or anything like that. So this is the closest. Um, so. Her parents named her Angelella. Looks like Angela, but it has an extra Ella at the end. But at the child's baptism, a dove flew into the church and perched on the edge of the font. Ever after, the little girl was known as Columba, Latin for dove. Okay. Columba lived as though she were half in heaven and half on earth. How does that work? Was she like angelical? Like, uh, she was a good kid? I don't know how that works. Um, in prayer, she often fell into ecstasies and it was said that she conversed with St. Catherine of Siena. The years 1347 to 1380. Ecstasy is like the fits of delight, but... So we're talking about experience, and we talked about how um, experience is not necessarily an outward tangible thing. Right. It's an inward thing, but it often overflows into an outward tangible thing. Mm -hmm. um, which leads me to this question. Talk to me about ecstatic experiences. Yeah. I know this is sort of a different <laughs> level, but... Right. Well, uh, I asked an old nun one time if she experiences ecstasy in prayer, and her answer was amazing. She said, these things are only for the faithful. And I think she nailed something on the head when she said that. These rapturous delight type of experiences, I have not seen them happen to people who are inconsistent. I've seen them happen to two types of people, uh, or people who do two things. Number one, they're faithful in prayer. And number two, they are resigned to just being with him for extended periods of time. Um, I've had many ecstatic experiences, and most of them happened after six to eight hours of just straight being with Jesus. Um, like, like I told you, I've done extended times, and every single one of them, he met me in a way that was inexplainable. Um, and they were very ecstatic, um, very beyond anything that could ever be communicated. They are incommunicable around you. And the glory of God is so strong on you, they can't stand up, they fall down, they shake. It's because the glory of God is so strong that the physical body, the muscles and sinews, everything, it responds uh, to the glory of the Lord. If you can hear the garbage trucks out front, I'm sorry. Garbage trucks are out front. Um, yet Columba also healed the sick with a touch of her hand. Ooh, healed the sick. Whatever situation you are in, the situation that could be sickness, could be poverty, could be hardship, could be limitation, could be limitation, could be barrenness, whatever situation you give us anywhere you are, believe in right now Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus. Um made peace between quarreling factions in the city of Perugia. Okay. miraculously brought an end to an outbreak of the plague. And converted the most hardened sinners, including a convicted murderer. Now, I don't want to get all Dostoevsky on us, but why do people always assume that murderers are are uh, like the non-believers or the atheists. Reminds me, I, I was at the, the Dillahunty and Peterson talk, what was it, three years ago? I was actually at that talk. I got to go, because it's two hours north from here, so we made the trip. Um, so we'll talk about the narrative. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. Yeah, well, it's, you can't reduce the world to a set of propositions. Why not? Oh, <laughs> look, uh, show me something that is no true problem. in the world that is not a proposition. That like you cannot put in a stable proposition? Something that is demonstrably true that I could not put in a proposition. <sighs> I was so frustrated. Anyway. Her reputation was such that the citizens of the neighboring town of Narni, sounds like Narnia, but it's spelt Narni, 
tried to kidnap her, hoping to make her their miracle worker. A miracle worker by hostage? Couldn't you just... You can't for... This is just true fantasy for me. Not everyone was taken with Columba. When Lucrezia Borgia met with her, the two women took an instant dislike to each other. Lucrezia Borgia. I'll put a snippet about Lucrezia Borgia in here. For centuries, persistent rumors claim that Lucrezia poisoned her enemies and committed incest with her brother. Documentary evidence for these accusations is scant, but perhaps Columba saw the real woman inside and didn't like what she saw. As for Lucrezia, um, master of Machiavellian politics, she may have resented encountering a person she could not manipulate. So what's this all got to do with Columba's witchcraft? patron saint hood. I don't know. What is certain is that she spread rumors that Columba was not a holy woman, but a sorceress who accomplished her miracles through witchcraft. It took that much of a story to get one sentence about why Columbus was considered a witch. No one believed the charges, but they did lead to Columba becoming the saint invoked against charms, spells, and all other forms of sorcery. That's it. That's all she wrote. And her saint card is this one. Well, I don't really consider her all that unlucky. It's just Lucrezia Borgia just didn't like her. That's it. That was kind of anticlimactic. But uh, that's all for number 13. Uh, come back for 14. See you later. Have a great day, guys. Don't forget to check out all my other videos on the channel and like and subscribe.